Hey, health fix junkies. It's Teresa Lear Levine from Becoming More Me, the podcast for busy minded entrepreneurs that want to be more and do less. Blessed to have appeared on not just one, but three episodes of the health fix. So I encourage you to check out episode 445. 411 and 322 of the Health Fix podcast, where I talk about breaking up with your old self, self sabotage, fears, and thriving through life's changes, <clears throat> perimenopause, using EFT tapping and hypnotherapy. You're listening to the Health Fix podcast. Here's your amazing host, Dr. Janine Kraus. Hey, health junkies. Likely you've heard about trauma being stuck in the body and how your thoughts and stories you tell yourself are maybe not quite true. Perhaps you've dabbled in working on changing your thought process, but let me ask you this. Do you believe you can change your story to change your life? For me, it took a lot of convincing that I created some stories that were keeping me stuck in repetitive patterns that I didn't quite understand. And I was keeping myself in those because of things that happened in the past. Now, it's taken some time but I'm awake and aware of these stories and I'm able to tell myself a new story when the old ones come up. So wherever you are in your health journey, owning your stories and learning to change them can be a key part in achieving optimal health. In this episode of the Health Fix podcast, I'm interviewing Alicia Kay. She is a licensed mental health counselor and a certified trauma counselor who specializes in supporting clients who struggle with childhood wounding, sexual trauma, relationship issues, and more. Throughout the years, she has helped thousands of men and women heal as they let go of the past and focus on their future. Alicia and I go deep into stories that keep us stuck and how to move forward. So let's introduce you to Alicia K. Hey, health junkies. I have Alicia K on today, and we're going to be talking about this awakeness that happens as you get older. You know, it may not be right at like 35. It may not be at 40. You come on your own time to this, but there's this awakeness where that happens where you're like, who really am I? And what's my purpose? And what am I doing here? And so Alicia and I are going to talk a little bit about that today and more. So Alicia, welcome to the Health Fix podcast. Thank you. I am really excited to be here. Well, when I saw your website, I was like, all right, this gal has, you know, you've been in the trenches, right? In the mental health field, you know what it's like to see real life folks in real life situations. You have the trauma background. And so for me, when I see that someone has that experience, I instantly will connect because it's like, we know what it's like on one side of the field. And then once you get out on the other side, you know the difference. So what I love to kind of start podcasts out with is just kind of something that I, I gathered from someone. And, and your motto is what really kind of stood out to me. You were born enough. Now let's clear out what's in the way of you believing it. Because I do believe that part of health and wellness and us getting to the point where we feel whole again is and, and part of the healing too, is really understanding this, this, we are enough and then believing it. So tell us a little bit about that motto. Where did that, oh. like, how did that download come to you? Like, how, how did this come about? Yeah. Uh, in, in so many ways, I, through my own life path and journey, it really was that, that self-discovery of the, you know, you said the word awakening. It was like, oh, waking, waking up to the truth of I've always been enough <laughs> and I've always been in there. The true self, the real self, the authentic self, the free self has always been a part of me, but it's the wounding and the trauma and these things that happened to us that, that cover that up, that help us not live from that place because we live in a world where we're taught to conform and we have to fit in and we have to appear normal and we have to search for love and all of these things that happen through our family of origin and society. You know, the older we get, the more we tend to forget our essence, right? That child within that's creative and playful and imaginative and free. And um, it's always helping people understand that it's not what you believe about yourself, right? Your beliefs are not your own. They're ideas that you created about you because of what happened to you. 
So let's work with that and understand why you at some form of your life or some time frame in your life, you created that as a form of survival to get through the circumstances you needed to get through. But because you created that belief, you have the right to change that, right? So let's get back to the part of you that knows that you were enough and that you essentially came into this life to work through some things and you are on your own journey of discovering yourself and getting back to the you that you first were when you took your first breath before this world started to really change and shift you into something that you're actually not. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I believe that most illness is because of not being your true self. You know, I look back and and I and of course I have my frame of reference because it's me, right? But I had no idea that my beliefs were thoughts that I'm, you know, thought over and over again in my head and I made up, right? Why don't we learn this in kindergarten? Like, where's that person? Where's that person to tell us? And this is why I do this yeah. podcast. Well, I mean, we could certainly get on our soapbox about what we yeah. learn in schools, right? Because schools come with the motto of we're supposed to learn this stuff from our parents. But if our parents are wounded and they don't know, where are we going to learn it from? And we're taught, you know, so many different things, right? We're taught to be obedient over sovereignty. We're taught to, you know, be controlled instead of having our own freedom and um, following that in intuition within. Like there's, there's just a lot that, you know, and, and I think it, it makes sense to why we, we forget that and why we essentially identify with our wounds more than we identify with our innate worth, right? We're not taught it. Yeah. And then, I mean, it, and, and this is kind of what you probably noticed in the mental health field. I, I worked in a low income clinic for many years, side by side. I'm, I was the acupuncturist that was kind of helping the the mental health counselors and, and psychotherapists work with a lot of patients. And, and all we focused on was wound, wound, wound. There was no positivity. And I'm like, no wonder people go to, you know, years of therapy and they're just hashing the wounds. We're not talking about those good enoughs, those those things that are blessings, right? Yeah. And I think it takes a person that actually knows the blessing and knows who they are in order to bring it out of other people. Mm -hmm. um, and for the, I, I would say like the first half of my career, I was incredibly wounded, mm -hmm. but I always, I think because of my own wounding, I was also able to relate to people and see them as innately valuable um, where I had just the utmost compassion and I didn't see them the way that, you know, I would say like society would label them or society would see them. Like I didn't see them for their symptoms. You know, I saw their symptoms as something that was a disorder or dysregulation that the body was, you know, communicating, like, pay attention, pay attention. This needs to be addressed. This needs to be cleared out. This needs to be healed. Um, and, and it really was doing that my own healing work alongside of helping other people do their healing worth that I started to, uh, you know, realize the bigger picture of how all of my path and all of my mess led into my message and, and, and really helped me embody my own feeling of worthiness um, and started to embark on a more uh, like spiritual path and looking at the bigger picture and, and other things that just wasn't available, you know, when I was younger. Yeah. You know, obviously we don't want to put any blame on parents that, and, and you said it well, I think in, in either the, the article I was reading of yours or if it was the website, but like, like you said, it, you know, it's not their fault and, and the blame, we can't put that there, you know, it's, it's not, they just didn't have the tools just like when we didn't have the tools, right. but now we're awake, right? We have this awareness that, wait a minute, there's something else going on. And this is where I love to do these podcasts talking about this particular subject. So when a lot of people are like, I know I'm enough, I value myself. And, and, and that a lot of times I feel like there's not that deeper understanding of you are enough. And your freebie, which guys, we're going to get to that in the end of the podcast, but her freebie just really outlines how you can understand this, this, okay, enoughness. So, so I'm going to turn it over to you and, and give us that little bit of a, if someone's listening to us right now and they're like, yeah, but I feel like I'm enough. I, I feel good about myself. What, what, what more do I need to do? Yeah. I, I explain to people all the time is it's different knowing it on a logical level and on a mind level versus a full embodied 
like somatic level. Mm -hmm. Uh, and oftentimes, you know, it's impossible to be a human being and not have fear, you know? And so that not enoughness can show up very different for each individual person. Uh, maybe it is in the area of like love and relationship where I, essentially don't communicate how I feel, or I don't ask for what I want, or I'm afraid to hurt someone's feelings, or uh, I'm afraid to say no, right? So it can show up in certain ways, or maybe it's with, you know, money or with, with business around, I self-sacrifice, or I'm afraid to be seen, or I'm afraid to be heard. And I don't speak my authentic truth because I'm afraid of rejection, right? There's these little micro things in the ways that it does show up because it's, we're, we all have fear within us. Mm -hmm. And so that not enoughness shows up and, you know, what am I afraid to do? What am I afraid to say? Uh, you know, what, it, where am I sacrificing myself for love and acceptance? Right. Cause that, that really means like, oh, uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm afraid to, uh, to fully embody my, my bigness, my boldness, my you -ness. And so I will dumb myself down or dim my light for lots of different reasons. And so it may not be someone saying I'm not enough, but it does show up. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that explanation, because I see it a lot in my practice, you know, and I see it a lot in myself too, because I'm like, yeah, I know I'm enough, you know, and I told myself that for years when I would listen to other people talk about embodiment out here, have people talking about different things. And I'm like, I'm enough of that. I don't see the the issue. And now once I became aware of like my little intricacies mm. that I would do. And so those of you who are listening, who maybe you're thinking like, yeah, I'm totally enough. I really, I don't understand this necessarily. It's looking at those patterns you repeat, right? And the things that just keep coming back and you're like, why does this keep happening to me? And I think for a lot of women, this, this, age, right? We, in our forties plus, I think we start to, it's like, okay, we've been repeating the same pattern for a long time. What, what gifts? So talk a little bit about how we can use the pattern repetition to help us to kind of figure out our story there and what we've been telling ourselves. Oh, it's so powerful. Um, and, and it is the patterns that we repeat that are the, the, I would invite like the point of curiosity, right? Mm -hmm. It's the, okay, so this is, this keeps coming up for me. Let's just say, I mean, for an innocent way of like food, right? Like women, women often go, <laughs> go to food for comfort. And that's a pattern that we have a really hard time breaking. But generally when we do something like that, it is, you know, I'm essentially like outsourcing my feeling of happiness for this substance or this food, or even like this person, because yeah. I don't want to face what's going on inside of me, which just means like, I can't handle my emotion. And so therefore I'm going to turn to food to self-soothe. Right. So, it, so when we say certain things or when we do a behavior or a, we have a pattern that we're not proud of, right. So it's something that we don't like about ourselves or something that we're not proud of about ourselves. There's always a story that goes along with that. Right. Mm -hmm. So if it's, let's just say, um, I remember when I <laughs> was raising my child and he used to get out of bed all the time. And I was like, every single time he would get out of bed, I'd be super stressed out. And I'd like, be in like my, my frantic state. And I would go to the fridge and I would get a piece of chocolate. Cause I was like, okay, this is going to make me feel better than <laughs> chocolate. But eventually that became a problem. So it was like, okay, well really what's going on. Right. So on the, on a deeper level, I'm frustrated. I feel like I'm a bad mom because I can't get my kid to go to bed. Um, I'm feeling inadequate. Like there's always an un unacknowledged feeling that goes along with the behavior that we're telling ourselves a story about. So if you can really get down a little bit deeper to what that pattern is trying to show you, then you can do the inner work to come up with different methods to heal the feelings. No, it doesn't mean I'm an inadequate mom because I can't get my kid to stay in bed. Like that's a story that my brain is creating mm -hmm. because of a feeling that's going on in my body that I haven't acknowledged or understood. So once we identify it and once we're aware of it, then we have the power of choice because it's no longer an unconscious drive. Yes. Yes. This is that part of becoming awake. And yes. really awakening yourself to, to the conscious, uh, the subconscious thoughts when they become, when subconscious becomes conscious, that is the most 
fascinating thing. I just caught myself yesterday. I'm going to give an example for folks who are, are listening just to kind of just see if you resonate. So I'm working on some publicity stuff. And I'm looking at the story that they're about to pitch out to a TV station. And I'm going, what? This, I mean, I did that, but that was a long time ago. I, I don't think that we should talk about that. And so the fear is like mounting, like, no, I don't think you guys should send it. No, I don't, I don't think it's a good idea. And so thinking about these things. And so, you know, yeah, it comes up for us all the time. I just did this yesterday. Um, I was boldly saying something online that was really uncomfortable for me to say. And I remember being like, oh, you know, immediately within five seconds, because that's what our wounding does. Our ego comes in within five seconds and tells us a story about something that, that, you know, we did. And I was like, oh, that sounded terrible. I'm going to delete it. I don't even know what I was talking about. I couldn't get my point across. I didn't, I wasn't very clear. Like all the mind drama starts to come in. And when that happens, that should be like a red checkered flag to be like, oh, I'm having an attack. <laughs> like my ego's attacking me. My wounding's attacking me. What are some other options that are available? Um, okay, well, no, it's everything is perfect as it is. You know, you aren't getting the same perception that everyone else is. I took mm -hmm. a couple deep breaths. I went back and listened, and I was like, I got myself in like a better energetic state, not a fearful state. And I was like, oh, that was actually perfect. <laughs> You know, but all oh the goodness. fear comes up, it comes, you yeah. know, because we're so afraid of how we appear or like, you know, offending someone, all the things that we do as women, because we're such caretakers and we, um, a lot of us have parts of us that want to appear perfect or want to be liked. It's just, you know, part of our DNA. Um, and it's interesting when you know how to, to work with it, the power that's available to change it. Oh, it's huge. It's huge. Cause I mean, I don't think I would post on social media if <laughs> at this point, but yeah, I mean, does it come up though? And I think that's the important part though. These things still come up for yeah, me. Yeah, always. And, and like you said, you, you just call it, you're like, okay, I'm aware now that I'm trying to block myself here and trying to self-sabotage or trying to just block probably is a better term. And this is where you're talking about clearing out what's yes. in the way. So for a lot of women that you see, what seem to be some of the other things that we need to clear out just so folks can kind of get a sense of um, what's common? Maybe they can resonate. Maybe it can. we can call it to awareness for them. Yeah, there's so much. Um, <laughs> True. It, it can go it can go a lot of different ways. Um, it A lot of it shows up in our our feelings of of worthiness. Mm -hmm. right around the worthiness wound. Um, I'm getting treated this way because, or there's something wrong with me that this keeps happening to me. Uh, it, it, sometimes it stems from like an abandonment wound or, or like unhealed masculine wound or unhealed mother wound where we, um, tend to attract into our lives, you know, people and circumstances that show us where we're not free right? Because it's the soul wants to be free. The soul wants to just engage in this world and play and be creative and have fun. Uh, and so it will always arrange people and circumstances to show us where we're stuck and where we are essentially dumbing ourselves down or um, like staying in situations that no longer serve us because mm -hmm. we're afraid of change or we're afraid of that next step. Um, and we've been indoctrinated into a system that makes us believe that our security and safety comes from our job and comes from our relationships and comes from what's in our bank account and comes, you know, all of the things that we attach to that can be taken away in any second if we really were honest about it. But we feel if we have this going on externally, then we're okay. But yeah. what I really like to teach is like safety and security comes from within you, mm -hmm. right? When, when you are aligned with the call of your soul, when you're doing what makes you feel purposeful and intentional and you're making a difference in your family or in your community or in your life, then the soul comes online and starts to make that feeling of aliveness come up. And I really teach that the most toxic thing for the soul is self-judgment it's foreign, right? Fear is foreign to the soul. And it will always show you in ways out externally, like how that fear is coming up. 
Mm-hmm. And, um, and then it's the judgment of self that we really need to work through. Right. So coming at a place that from curiosity and from, um, like saying like, oh, isn't it interesting that I reacted that way or that I, you know, evaluated myself in that way? What, you know, what, what's the truth, you know, mm-hmm. the, the ego and the inner shamer always wants to feed us lies. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. I think for a lot of people, we don't see that at first, right? Mm-hmm. We, we see the lies and then we repeat them in our head and, and create these, these fabricated stories about ourselves. Hey, Hell Junkies, wanted to tell you about my pal, Dr. Anna Marie Frank's supplement line that specifically targets the needs of women. From anxiety to depression to getting focused and balancing those hormones, as well as helping with sleep, she's got you covered. Plus, she has teas too. This day and age, it's hard to know what supplement companies are up to when it comes to sourcing and quality. That's why I love to get to know company owners. Dr. Anna Marie has created formulas that combine what I would do if I owned a supplement and tea company. So wanted to tell you about them. As a listener of the Health Fix podcast, you can get 10% off your order by using the code D-R-J-K-R-A-U-S-E when you head to happywholeyou.com. Now, say you're driving or out on an adventure and you're not gonna remember where to find this website. That's okay. My favorite products are all on my website at drjkrausnd.com. Just click on shop and you'll find everything I stand behind and use myself right there. So let's get back to the podcast. And yeah. and so I noticed in, in, in guys, I mentioned it before and we'll make sure you definitely get access to it is, is the simple strategies to dismantle the most common, um, three unhealthy beliefs is, is what Alicia has for us for, for the freebie for this podcast. But what I noticed in there is you did have some questions, just like you were saying a minute ago, the different questions to ask yourself mm-hmm. when you feel like this thought process seems a little, you know, either cyclical or hmm, this is new. What other questions could folks really ask to kind of bring themselves into awareness? Yeah. I always like the question, is it true? Right. Right. Is it true? Because one thought is one thought out of the infinite possibilities out there in the quantum field and in the universe. So if my one thought, (laughs) right, and there's a ton of other potentials, you know, then is it true that I, um, you know, that I'm not enough, right? For for me, one of my core wounds or my 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 beliefs was I'm invisible and I don't matter, and that was a theme that repeated over and over and over throughout my life until I really started to look at that and be curious about why that was there. Right. I had a teenage mother and a teenage father. And so I literally was invisible to them because they were living their lives. And I was exposed to so much trauma and so many things that I shouldn't have been exposed to at a young age. Of course, I felt that way. And in order to cope with it, in order to make sense of it, I had to understand it and be very, very curious. So it's always um, being willing to dispute the thought that you have in your mind. Is it true that I'm not enough? Is it true that I screwed up my life? Is it true that I'm never going to find love again? Is it true that I um, am a failure, right? Whatever the belief is, it's be radically curious about that and be open to dissecting that because it is a belief that your brain chose to hold on to outside of all of the other possibilities that are out there. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Is it true? What are some other potential possibilities? Um, What am I not seeing that someone else might say about me, right? So for so long, um, everybody else would say these positive things about me, but I couldn't take that in because I didn't believe it, right? So for instance, it could be a question around, um, well, a lot of my clients would ask me, well, what would Alicia say? What would Alicia do? Right. So, <laughs> so I become their inner voice, which I love, but for me, it would be like, well, what is, what does my best friend say about me? Mm-hmm. Right. What is someone that I really love that I really trust? What does this person believe about me? And why can't I hold on to that? What part of me is rejecting that? 
because the outside mirror is all, or the, the outside world is always a mirror for unhealed, unprocessed wounds within us. That's the hard part, I think, is is knowing that you're getting back what you put out there. It's like, mm. ooh, because when things start coming back at you, you're like, oh, man, really, I need to, I really need to work on some things. And I think for some people, we don't see that. It's it's yeah. harder, harder to see that. How do you help folks with that mirroring kind of thing that's showing up? Is it back to awareness, back to questions, back to things of that nature? Yeah, I always start with the foundation that, you know, you are a you are a divine, powerful spiritual being that is squeezed into this human vessel that came here to explore life. And so if you can hold the premise that you are the creator and that you created this belief somewhere inside of you, what has happened to you that you haven't yet acknowledged to hold on to that belief so strongly? And it's always related to old stuff. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Yeah. Do you believe we have to ha rehash the old stuff? Can we just acknowledge and then move on? Do you think that's kind of the way... Yeah. I think yes. And I think there's always, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a trauma therapist at heart. Right. So I'm really, um, I, I'm very familiar with how the nervous system and how the brain holds on to undigested, unprocessed, unacknowledged emotion. And I feel that until we actually release that emotion, then we can't make room or space for new ideas and new awareness and new, um, like uh, a new level of expansion to come through. Uh, so I really do feel that we need to at least feel it. We need to acknowledge it. We need to work through it and not avoid it, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Because what we resist and what we avoid tends to persist. But I do think depending on what is going on with someone, it does help to go back to clear it out emotionally at least so that it can be in your conscious awareness. Um, I've been an EMDR therapist for, I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it's an eye movement desensitization processing. Uh, and it's a really radical way to clear out the memory that says stuck there because when it is stuck in the brain and body, then you know, we tend to keep repeating the patterns and cycles until that wound does get cleared out. Uh, so I do feel that it benefits somebody to go back. Now, how deep they go back is very dependent on the type of trauma and what the person is holding on to and what's happened to them. Uh, and, you know, some people don't, ha don't have that. They can just acknowledge it. They can feel it. They can call it for what it is. And then, you know, they can move on because they have that inner resiliency and strength within already, but not everybody does. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think that's something to acknowledge. I also think it ties in perfectly to talk about somatic breath work because yeah. that's kind of what, as an acupuncturist, as you know, a person who does a lot of body work on folks when I'm in my office, I do feel like that is one of the best ways to clear. Because yeah. if you can acknowledge, feel where it is, and then let it go, I feel like that can save a lot of grief just in and of itself. Will you explain to folks a little bit more about somatic breathwork and how you use it in your practice? Yes. Uh, it is, for me, a game changer. So before breathwork came into my life, I was one of those professionals and, you know, people that would look for the, that the thing that's gonna, that's gonna do, do the thing to help my clients heal. Yeah. I was constantly, constantly going to trainings. You know, I do internal family systems work, EMDR, you know, somatic, I do all this stuff, mindfulness. And I would say that I had no idea what I was missing until I came into breath work. Um, someone came to me and said, if you work with trauma, then you actually have to go get trained in this, this type of breath work. And I was like, all right, I, you know, I'll give anything a try. I'm super, um, <laughs> I'm a risk taker and I, I tend to, to follow my gut and follow what the universe gives me as signs. So what I started to understand from this modality is that, um, it's all about our nervous system. And our nervous system and is essentially like our energy centers, our aura. 
And when our nervous system is not clear and when we're holding on to pain, trauma, repressed emotion, like we often, it's suppression, right? It's depression. And we repress the action, which is the emotional, um, uh, what is it? reaction, right? When we suppress the reaction and we stuff it down, then the body is constantly sending us signals because the nervous system isn't clear and it's out of alignment. And we are essentially responding to that at a mind level, you know, so we're, the body is always sending signals to the brain. And then the brain is trying to make sense of what's going on in the body. And for so long, I've been working with people's thoughts and people's like feelings from up here not from here Mm -hmm. and using this type of breath work, it actually activates the natural innate process to clear out stress. So, uh, we're mammals, right? So this Mm -hmm. is the work of, you know, Peter Levine and, and a lot of other, um, advanced professionals that do somatic work. But when an animal actually is getting, you know, chased in the woods or they go through a traumatic experience, when they know that they're safe, right? When they know that that action has been completed and that they are going to live, then they do this really deep, heavy breathing down into the belly, into the diaphragm. So you'll see the animal taking these big, deep inhales and exhales to actually activate the nervous system to have a stress response to clear out the adrenaline and cortisol and all of the stress hormones that got built up in the bloodstream so that it can get up and move on and not hold that experience in the body. But us human beings never had a process to do that. And so we're walking around in a stressed out state, in a survival state, and we don't even know it because Mm -hmm. those hormones haven't been cleared out of our nervous system yet. And when you start to clear them out using breath work, then you actually become more clear on a mental level. Uh, And I was shocked for my first breathwork session. I had no idea what I was getting into. I went in very blind. Uh, Like I said, I'm a risk taker. (laughs) Um, And I just went for it. I did super deep breaths. And before I knew it, I was two years old, frozen against a wall and, you know, hearing my mom get severely beaten. Like it went right back to the place of my trauma that, I was holding in my body since I was two and I was, um, you know, it was intense, but what really came to me afterwards was I had no idea how guarded and protected protective I was like daily. Like I didn't know what it felt like to actually feel calm and clear and collected and grounded until after my first breath work session. Wow. Wow. No, it's impressive. They're powerful. They're powerful. I mean, I've had some very interesting ones. I even had one on, on the podcast where like, there was like tears coming out of eyes. It was Mm -hmm. crazy. Right. And, and it's, for a lot of people, and and you know, I grew up in the Midwest, it's, it's Midwest. You're like, Whoa, that's weird. That's woo woo, you know, cause that's, what I grew up with, but at the same time, working in the energy field, when we can release something, I mean, even just being with someone in, with acupuncture needles and watching a, what I, you know, an emotional release happen where tears yeah. come or, or giggling or like some, you know, you know, you meant, yeah. different things can happen. It's like impressive to see the nervous system at work. In yes. The- and now, I mean, depending on what comes up, like not every session is the same. I have incredibly right. blissful sessions where I'm like dancing on the mat and I'm having fun <laughs> and I'm connecting with my body. And I was like, oh, this is what it feels like to be a woman <laughs> where I didn't necessarily have access to that before my nervous system started to become clear. And now I know when I need a session, like mm-hmm. now I know what my baseline is and I'm like, oh, I, I need to go breathe, right? Or I need to, I need to incorporate that again because it just feels so much better when you're in your body and you're experiencing life instead of just trying to survive the day. And unfortunately, I think that is where a lot of women are at. And then you add perimenopause and menopause symptoms on top of that with hot flashes and night sweats and insomnia and juggling maybe kids and parents. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Women, we carry the weight 
of the world on our shoulders because we have such an immense capacity to love. Um, and oftentimes when I'm doing a breathwork session, one of my prompts is just like, you know, let go of the weight. Where are you feeling the pressure? You know, it's okay to make it about you right now. It's okay to feel what you're feeling right now so that we can do those things we love, right? We don't do those because we, you know, we're obligated. We love our family. We love our kids. We love our husbands, our partners. And, and sometimes we just need our own space to, to be able to do what we do best. Absolutely. And that's probably if anything, where I do think a lot of women end up having some chronic health issues mm. is, is the lack of space giving where yes. you give to everyone else and not so much to yourself. Do you have any stories about that from clients or anyone you can think of or even just yourself in general? Yeah. You know, usually it presents as anxiety when we're not, when we're giving and giving and giving and we're holding on to all the stress and we're running around and managing everything for everybody else. And it usually presents as, as feeling anxious. And my recipe for anxiety is, you know, what are you feeling? What are you not facing? What are you not saying? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and really helping people drop into that. You know, I had a woman, you know, just yesterday and I was like, you don't have an anxiety problem. You have a, a weight of the world on your shoulders problem, <laughs> right? So let's talk about that. Like, let's create the space where you can just open up and you can use this as a way for you to, to, to purge so that you can go out there and manage what you need to do, you know, day to day. And people say, I remember one, one person one time gave me a comment that was like, you publicly say that you love yourself more than your kid. And I was like, mm, that's misconstrued. However, I will say that I make it an absolute priority to take care of myself, whether that's, you know, waking up at five o'clock in the morning and doing my meditation and my breath work and my cold plunge before I start my day so that I can go and be mom, right? When I take care of myself and I'm listening to my body and I'm prioritizing my needs, then I have so much more free love to give because my heart is in it, right? I'm not scattered. I'm more present and I'm available for whatever anybody needs from me because of that self-care, because of that priority that I make for me. Yeah. Yeah. That's so huge. That's so huge. And I think a lot of people, you know, we, we've been, for lack of a better term, kind of brainwashed to think that you know, women give, 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 we give of ourselves, we do not, you know, complain, you don't, you know, you don't uh, show that, you know, you, you want to take care, it's almost like a guilty pleasure to have self care, right? It's, yes. it's interesting, even though, like, I think we're coming around, I think we're definitely coming around there. Um, but I, but I think it is something that folks are, are very, like, leery, or maybe even some of the belief situation that, we have going on in our There's head. so much. I mean, we were, you know, not to necessarily get into a ton of religious stuff, but we're taught that we're supposed to be selfless. Mm -hmm. Like, eh, I think that's misconstrued, right? Because when you care about self, you then have the capacity to care for other instead mm -hmm. of it feeling like a stressor or an obligation, it becomes a choice. Like I want to take care of you because I love you, not because I have to. Right. Even the language of that sound, it's stressful. It's shrinking. It's like it, you know, the words are so important that we use because, you know, we forget that we have choice mm -hmm. and some of us don't feel like we do. And I think that yeah. that is soul crushing. Yeah. No, I, I hear often, especially women over 40 will say like, I have no choices of what I have to do. The other one is, is I gave up my dreams for my kids. I'll hear that a lot. And then I'll also hear like as my third one that I commonly hear is like, I I don't have any dreams anymore. I don't mm. feel anymore. I just do. And that oh pains me. Yeah, because we walk around numb. One of my mm -hmm. primary things is I always try to identify the point in which someone lost themselves. Yeah. Right. Tell me, tell me what it was like before you had kids and before you were running around in a career and all of the things that we have to do as women. Like, I truly feel that women, you know, we're not supposed to be forced to be in the workplace and do all that we're doing. And here we are. And it's a beautiful thing. And 
we lose ourselves in that process. And I, it's not about getting back to self, but it's about the remembering of who you are outside of the roles that you um, are, you know, it's a conscious choice to be in them, but that you're playing, right? Mm-hmm. We think, <laughs> we, we, well, I, I think that one of the societal lies is that, you know, get married, have kids, buy a house, do these things, and then you're successful and you're happy. It's like, no, 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 no. Like, really? Like, I don't know. When I had my kid, I was like, you lied to me. <laughs> this is this is not that happy. It's, it has blissful moments, sure, but like this is really hard. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 I think that we feel like we're somewhat failing because society portrays it that we're supposed to be happy and that we're supposed to have it all together all the time. And we're ashamed to admit that we're not. And I think that as the feminine, one of the things that we can start to do is to not shame ourselves for not feeling okay and for not being that happy. Own it, claim it, then let's figure out <laughs> how to work with that right. instead of wearing the mask that we're okay all the time. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I wholeheartedly agree and fully admit that I lived that for years. Yeah. Years until I was like, okay, <laughs> I can't do this anymore, you know, and I and unfortunately, I think a lot of women end up in that space where they're like, I can't do this anymore. And then the health things happen. That's right. And that's that's right. what I want to stop the cycle. Yeah, because not to say it's a choice to manifest disease, but it will show up as a call or a cry for attention, for change. You know, because we're not living in alignment with our full, complete, intuitive selves. We we lost that connection to that inner guidance, to that essence. And it's a wake-up call a lot of times. Mm-hmm. And and definitely, you know, I don't want I want to go positive because definitely you've got you've got your program, you know, breakthrough to bliss. This is where I'm headed towards guys here. I believe we all can dream again. I believe we can all, you know, get rid of the anxiety. We don't need supplements. We don't need pills. You know, I, I think that there are ways to do it. And and it goes back to the nervous system and really working on convincing yourself you're safe. You're enough. And and so you have a freebie. And I know I keep referring back to this, guys. It's because I read it through like eight times because I was like, this is just so good. It's just so good. <laughs> and you talk you talk about the four Ds. You talk about your RAIN solution. And, you know, I would love for folks to kind of have a little teaser as to, you know, even with your free B, you have valuable information there to give folks a, a next step from right now. So if someone's listening to this and they're like, I am stuck. Yes, I have anxiety. Maybe I think I have ADHD because I can't focus. I have a lot of brain fog, you know any of those things, I would love for you to speak to those folks right now and be like, look, mm. this, is what, this is what we you could do even yeah. with just yeah. the freebie. And then we'll talk about your signature program. First of all, know that there is nothing wrong with you and that you are completely normal. <laughs> that is the foundation that we always have to start with. Because when we live in a fear-based state of, you know, there's something wrong with me, what's wrong with me, and we, we, we get into like a panic mode, then we can't be expansive, we can't be curious. So I always invite, you know, the discomfort, the dis-ease, the dysregulation is always a cry for help, right? Your body is screaming to you to pay attention and to not shame yourself and to not think that there's no hope for you, right? Like the fact that you're living and that you're breathing means that you're, you're here for a reason and that your mission and your destiny is not complete yet. And it's never too late ever. So start with that foundation first and then be radically curious. And if you can take the higher perspective of, if I believe that I'm a soul having this human experience what is my soul trying to communicate to me? What does it need to change? Where do I feel like I lost myself? What don't I like in my life? And if I could start to dream again, and if nobody would be mad at me and society wouldn't judge me, what would I want? Right? What is it that I ultimately want? 
for my life? Do I want to let go of responsibility? Do I want to stop playing the roles that I'm playing? You know, really get curious about the possibility that there is a potential out there where you can really find happiness and fulfillment and joy again. But it starts with the recognizing that something's not, that something's not right, right? Maybe you're not on, I don't ever believe that you're on a wrong path, but I believe that there is always a version of a higher path that is meant for you, that only the innate intelligence inside of you can reveal to you if you choose to tune into that. You choose to just look within and ask yourself some really deep clarifying questions. If I could have it my way and no one would be mad, what would I be doing? What would my day look like? Start to fantasize and really imagine that again. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I really, I really truly feel that we are the conscious creators. You know, we absolutely can, it's always available, always. Did that answer your question? (laughs) I don't even know. I, yes, you know, it, it gives us a really good sense of, of what you, you know, what you do, what you can, what you can unlock. Let's call, let's call it that, you know, and being able to dream again Yeah. because so many women, myself included. I mean, I remember driving home from work one day and being like, I haven't sang to a song and been happy. And I don't remember, which mm-hmm. is very disturbing. And then, you know, I started thinking more and going, I never even, like, I stopped dreaming. Like, I was like, this is it. This is the rest of my life, you know? And it's like, whoa, that's so much different than than me. And so I really want women to think about what they're, what it's like to, you know, we, we think about getting older, right? And we think about, like, is this it? <laughs> this is going to be. And, and we've been taught to-, to settle for that. Yeah, you know, the, tr- the truth is, is, you know, we're not supposed to do it like our parents or our grandparents or older generations where they met one person and they stayed with them forever. Or they met, they stayed in one job and they worked through to retirement like they that was their blueprint. Right. We <laughs> we don't have to live that way anymore. And when we think it's like, you know, this is the way that it's going to be and this is what's going to bring me security and I'm supposed to be happy here, but I'm not, then we're essentially, we, we, we dim our light, right? Mm -hmm. We, we squash, we squeeze our channel so much that we lose connection to that innate intelligence, that feeling of aliveness and that, of that vibrancy that, you know, if some, some women have, right. I can guarantee for the listeners out there, if you pick one person your age and you like say some model, super doesn't necessarily be a super model, but somebody that you know that has that vibrancy and vitality, that means that it's possible for you too, right? Because the outer world is only emanating what we want to cultivate and what we want to eliminate from our lives. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's Definitely. all a possibility and it's all about it's all about you, right? Because when you are in that vibration of loving yourself and loving your life, it has a ripple effect on everything around you. You become magnetic and you become inspired and you become like alive again. Which is perfect title for your podcast, by the way. Guys, she's going to have a podcast coming out end of May here. And this is 2024 and it's called Alive and Awake. And the name itself, the title in and of itself kind of comes from, I hear that in in your message. Is that kind of how that came about? Yeah. I mean, I was walking, I don't want to say like I was walking dead, but I was walking, <laughs> I was, wa- I was walking, I was suffering, you know, for the yeah. first 35 years of my life, I was suffering immensely. And I was repeating these patterns and I was ashamed of myself and I wasn't proud of the things that I was doing or what I was putting into my body or all of that stuff. And I would, you know, in one, in one way, I felt like it was out of sync with here I am, I'm this professional, I'm helping women all the time, but in my personal life, I feel like I don't have it all together. And um, it wasn't until I really started to get radically curious about the bigger picture, about why I was here, about what I'm supposed to, why, why did all this stuff happen to me? 
You know, why did my soul choose the mom that it chose? Why did it choose the dad that it chose? Why did I go through all this trauma? You know, what really is the bigger picture of all of that? And what am I supposed to birth in the world? Because I refuse to believe that it's an accident. Mm -hmm. So that's when I started to, you know, through crisis, really, um, you know, I got into church. I started like really kind of, you know, learning more about spirituality and the other just became a seeker of all things. And then I was like, oh, <laughs> okay. And it slowly just started to get revealed to me that there's something else going on that we're not even, we don't even talk about, right? And we don't, unless you actually seek it out yourself, which, you know, I think is, is an important path for everybody to find their own way. Um, we're not, it's not, it's not something that we're, you know, turning on the TV channel too. <laughs> No, so much that is so in the opposite direction, right? I believe, I believe. yeah, and I yeah. really feel you know that that joy is our birthright, you know, that feeling fully alive and awake and free is what we came here to experience, and it's all the stuff that happened to us in our early lives that we use like to identify ourselves, right? That becomes our identity. And that's become, that becomes what we attach to, but we always have the power to change that if we choose to. Like you say somewhere on the website, change your story, change your life. You know, tell, change the story you tell yourself is, is so, you know, we hear this over and over again, but I think a lot of people, you know, and this is why I do these podcasts is, is really, you can change everything. You One perception at a time. That's yeah. how powerful we are. We mm -hmm. always have the right to make a different choice. Anything that we look at, there's always a different choice available. You know, I used to think, um, you know, one of my stories was, um, I have to do this all on my own. I'm all alone. You know, like mm -hmm. it all falls on me, you know, like, was <laughs> one of my, it's, it's one of my, my go-tos when I feel stressed out. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, okay. What am I not doing to take care of myself? But that's no longer an available choice to me because I know that that's just not true. I have people supporting me and surrounding me all of the time. And granted, I was, you know, I was raised by a single mom. I don't have any siblings, you know, I don't have necessarily help from family. And so my story was, I'm all alone. I have to do this on my own. And when you start to look at that story, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. I also had to look at the ways in which, well, maybe I wasn't asking for help. Maybe I was um, actually creating my own suffering because I was too ashamed to let people know that I needed help. All of those types of things are available if we really choose to look at them. And so now when I, when it pops up, I'm like, no, no, no I don't believe that anymore. The truth is, is that I'm surrounded by people all of the time and help is always available to me. I'm so not alone. I've never been alone. That's just something that my ego and my wounded self created out of survival. Mm -hmm. it's wild it's wild the stories we tell ourselves the the stories we create for ourselves and and i do think that for for many just becoming aware and yes. and awake to yes. the fact that that these things are there and so you are doing this of course with that podcast coming out but also with your program where you work with folks so let's talk a little bit about breakthrough to bliss because i'm imagining you dancing somewhere <laughs> and, in this and, and inspiring other folks to, to find their bliss, whatever that may be. Yeah. It's very much a intensive program that I've designed for my years of doing this work and what I really feel people, um, you know, it's like a, it's like a crash course to like, you know, let's just say you're, you come in for this issue and you want to work with me, but we're going to condense six years of therapy into a six month program. <laughs> so we, we identify your core wounds. We identify those beliefs. We do some deep, you know, processing work around, you know, clearing them out from your body using, you know, EMDR, using trauma processing, using somatic breath work, um, lots and lots of journaling to get to, so you can get to know the parts of yourself that you created out of survival and changing them. And so the first half of the program really is about doing that deeper work. And then once that's cleared out and you're in a more 
positive energetic state and you're starting to feel more like yourself, you're starting to see things more clearly. Then we bring in the other piece, which is like magic and manifestation of, you know, how do you want to feel? How do you want to show up? What does that feel like in your body? And we do a lot of that work through, through, through breath work still through lots of, again, journaling, lots of reading, lots of meditation, um, and trying it on as a new outfit, right? What does bliss feel like to me? What does being in a state of joy actually feel like in my body? And then we train the brain to look for how that's so available to you all day, every day. Mm. That sounds wonderful. That sounds wonderful. I'm I'm looking forward to checking things out there. And definitely for those of you guys who are listening, we'll get links to her six month program there, Breakthrough to Bliss. And then of course the podcast, because I'm sure you're going to give lots of good nuggets there and alive and awake. Oh my goodness, Alicia, so many good things here. I am excited to look look at more and what happens with that podcast. I'm I'm excited. I know I'm going to be listening. Oh, I appreciate it. This has been incredible to just dive in and and get to know you and the work that you're doing out there in the world for women is incredible. So thank you for also the way that you serve and finding your own bliss and your own purpose. <laughs> oh boy. Yes. Thank you. It's uh, this is podcast part of it, you know, we're at labor of love here. Thanks mm -hmm. again for coming on. I appreciate it. Hey, Health Junkies, thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Health Fix Podcast. To help support my mission to bring you tips, tricks, and tools to help you optimize your health, I'd be grateful if you'd like, subscribe, and write me a review for the podcast. And if you hear a product you're interested in on the podcast, you can now go over to my website to learn more. That's doctor spelled out, J K R A U S E nd.com. Just click on shop and you'll find all the information on my favorite products that I stand behind and use myself. All affiliate income earned with your purchases goes directly to help support the production of the podcast so I can keep bringing you quality health information. I appreciate your support and I'm honored to have you listening to my podcast as a fellow health junkie. Thanks again.